So my name is Susie Q. Smith, and I am from Denver. I am a poet, spoken word artist, slam poet, etc. And that's what I do for a living. So I also teach locally. I teach poetry and spoken word with youth on record in Denver, so in a couple of local high schools. And then when I'm not teaching, I am generally touring the country performing poetry. My grandmother introduced me to poetry, and so it was sort of a bedtime story for us growing up. Um, it's very common to hear Paul Lawrence Dunbar or Edna St. Vincent Millay or Langston Hughes um, in our household. It was very normal to read poetry aloud to one another. Um, also, I grew up in a very, very crowded house with several siblings. And so when you have a small house and lots of people, privacy is not a real thing. And so I learned to write in poetry because it was sort of my code language. I think that everything in my life inspires my poetry. Um, and through sharing it, there it depends on the piece, but I really, really hope that I can make people feel something. Um, I think it's very, very easy to sort of get disconnected from our hearts. And I think it's sort of my mission um, to make people reconnect to their hearts. And so for my process, um, I wrote a piece that is um, basically in four parts. Um, and, and it's, again, it's inspired by my book. So, a poem for what mud woman and mothers. One, I do not know how many people it has taken to make me. My uncle, who is known to bring laughter, once told me a story about my great grandmother, how she worked alongside her husband in the fields with a swollen belly until the minute she went into labor, at which point she went into the house, gave birth to their baby, and had supper on the table when her husband came inside that evening. I thought this exaggeration of my uncle's was hilarious until I learned that this story is true, that I am made of such stories. My grandmother, who remembers all the stories, once told me about her great aunt Song of the Blackfoot tribe, who was kidnapped and sold into slavery as a teenage girl. Aunt Song became a cautionary tale in our family because of her insubordination and the frequent beatings that she suffered. She never forgot that she was free as milkweed, never bundled her pride in a basket of reeds and sent it down the river for a better life, never apologized for the strength in her jaw. Aunt Song never broke. My great-grandmother on my father's side raised 11 children during the Depression, taught all of them to read and write poetry, to play the piano, to sing. We are still making music. We will always have song. My great-great-grandmother on my mother's side lost her husband suddenly to a fever when their son was still new in the world. She strapped her baby to her hip, took to the cotton fields in Tennessee until her weathered hands worked their way to pull potatoes from a cold Colorado welcome. We have called it home ever since. My grandmother on my mother's side, a church-going woman whose mother I hear used to read tea leaves in the parlor, raised seven children with needle and thread, with wooden spoons and batter, hauling the corners and stitching them together, folding the rhubarb in with sugar. We are always making something beautiful out of what we can grow. My grandmother on my father's side has taught me nearly everything I know. Grandmothers, all of them, will live always in the mud of my flesh and the earth of my bones. We are forever. Two, we still remember how to make things. The first storytellers were women, gathered round steaming cauldrons, grinding mortar and pestle, the medicine makers, the kitchen witches, the magic movers, the balm brewers, the mud women, combing the earth for seeds to pass on to their daughters. They found that cardamom, native to the evergreen forest in India, is good to clean the blood, heal the mouth and throat, and lift depression. The best secret a mother might whisper to her daughter the night before she marries is that the spicy citrus seed is well respected as an aphrodisiac and will surely bring her husband to task. The mud women know all about cinnamon, popular since ancient Egypt for treating coughs and aches, and while our ancestors might not have called it antimicrobial, they might have known a good medicine when they smelled it. If you've ever sipped on tea made from ginger root, you know it will save your life in winter. The mud women know this too, how time helps us to breathe, how garlic cleans the blood and everything else with it. Mud women know these things, cultivating cures at kitchen tables and call it dinner. You can call them old wives' tales if you want to, but we all come to the day when we know our grandmother was right. Three, a song of gratitude. Thank you for the dirt that has become my family. Thank you for the sweet air, crisp as an iron dress on Sunday morning. 
Thank you for the trees huddled close in pastures, whispering secrets like children under a table. Thank you for the hovering hummingbirds, for the honeybees, for the night's lulling crickets. Thank you for my quiet hands, for the story of my new eyes. Thank you for teaching my feet to sing the name of my mother's home until it is mine also. Four, we have not forgotten how to dig. I come from a long line of mighty women, women who remember, women who tell, women who put their hands in the mud, divining truth and sweeping shadows. I am still learning from my ancestors. Listen when they whisper over a pot of black-eyed peas, drop a little peanut butter in your baby. Feel them stir in my cells and ask for water, for lemon and cayenne. Taught me that coconut oil is as good for the hair as it is for the elbows and door hinges. Know that it is they who taught me that a little apple cider vinegar and honey cures all but broken bones and hurt feelings, but they got something for all that too. We all come from something bigger, some root that reminds us we were alive before our memory began to frame the story. And we all leave something behind. If only our bones, we all return as some kind of seed. I plant my bare feet in the mud whenever I can. I call it home. 